In this video, we're going to talk about disturbance. When we see major changes happen in plant and animal communities, we have a natural tendency to think that these sorts of changes are bad and that the impacts of these changes are negative. But in fact, all communities of plants and animals go through periods of change after events like fire or floods or pest outbreaks. And in many cases, these types of events are important to the way that the community functions and to overall levels of biodiversity in these systems. So let's take a look, closer look at disturbance and see how this affects plant and animal communities. By the end of this video, you should have a better sense of why disturbance is a natural part of biological communities. You should be able to describe the impacts of some major disturbance types and explain how these might affect community composition. You should also be able to analyze or start to think critically about how human activities can lead to decreases or increases in disturbance frequency or severity and how this may then affect plant and animal communities. When we talk about disturbance, we're talking about events that lead to a major change in biological communities. There's an extremely long list of things that can cause disturbance, and the photos illustrate a handful of disturbances that are common in terrestrial ecosystems, including wildfire, pest outbreaks, flooding, and forest removal. There are many, many other examples of impacts on communities. For example, in freshwater systems, large reductions in water flow or large floods or, or sudden changes in temperature can have big impacts on freshwater biological communities. Now, disturbance can be natural, or it can be human-caused, or it can be some combination of the two, and it's often this last category. Wildfire is a great example of this. I'll talk in more detail about wildfire in a different video, but it's an important natural aspect of disturbance in many terrestrial ecosystems. But the frequency and severity of wildfire can be heavily influenced by human activity. Activities um, in freshwater systems, such as creating channels for rivers, installing dams, or introducing fish populations, are example of human-caused disturbances to freshwater communities. A key point here is that disturbance is neither good nor bad, and it's often a key part of how communities function. However, the presence or absence of disturbance can have, major, have a major influence on the type of biological community that's present in a particular location, and this may end up being more or less desirable from a human perspective. Most disturbances occur at semi-regular intervals. The video here shows a relatively unusual disturbance in which a large patch of forest off of Berthoud Pass in Colorado was blown down in a strong windstorm in September 2020. This is not a common event in forest, but it does occur every few decades in patches of forest. If you look closely at this video, you'll also see another type of disturbance that has been particularly important in Colorado forests over the last two decades. If you look closely in the forest, you'll see a lot of dead trees, and those trees have died off because of an outbreak of a pine beetle. In some parts of Colorado, this outbreak has killed off almost all the pines in large areas of forest. And this is a great example of a disturbance that is both natural, but also influenced by human activities. These pine beetles are a naturally occurring insect disturbance, but their activity and spread has been influenced by warming temperatures due to climate change and by forest management decisions that have suppressed fire and led to older stands of pine trees that are more vulnerable to insect outbreaks. Fire is a really important form of disturbance and one that plays a major role in the structure and function of many forests and grasslands. Because disturbances like fire are natural processes, plants are often well adapted to these types of changes. As an example, many pine cones are serotonous, meaning they only release their seeds after a fire. And without fire, these forests actually slow down or stop their reproduction. In another example, disturbances like fire or forest clearing, like the blowdown on the prior slide, allow a lot more light into the forest, and that can allow different groups of species to grow. Fires are also important to the age structure of the forest and can reduce the likelihood of disease spread. These are all examples of why disturbance is a natural part of the way that communities work and important to the structure and function of biological communities. The other interesting thing about disturbance is how it's similar in many ways to human management activities of plant and animal communities. The image here shows an area of deliberately cleared forest, and the impacts of this clearing have some similarity to what would happen after fire or another type of tree death. Interestingly, in this particular image, the trees are removed to reduce the likelihood that a fire could come through the site and go over the ridge into the neighborhood on the other side. Many agricultural techniques have similarities um, to herbivory, which is when animals eat plants or when pests remove vegetation or fruits from plant species. 
One big difference, however, between a natural plant community and a managed community is often that human managed plant communities have much reduced biodiversity relative to their natural counterparts. In some cases, just a single species of a tree or a crop that is periodically harvested for food or fiber. We'll talk more about these processes in the videos on agriculture. Another important aspect of disturbance is the change that occurs after the disturbance comes through the community. We'll talk about succession in a different video, but succession is a predictable change in vegetation that occurs after a disturbance. The key point for now is that after a disturbance, some plant species actually become more common than others, and some plant species become less common. And that process is important to maintaining biodiversity both in plant and animal communities. In the photo here, you see a, a relatively diverse community that includes aspen, pine, grass, and shrubs. In comparison, the mature pine forest that might occur on this site would actually have fewer plant species than there are after this particular type of disturbance of fire or forest removal. To summarize, disturbance is important to virtually all communities because it affects biological processes such as reproduction, it changes the habitat structure, and it changes the physical environment of the system. Many major disturbances such as fire or insect outbreaks can allow new populations of plants and animals to thrive, and this can in some cases lead to higher levels of ecosystem scale biodiversity. As we'll talk about in other videos, human management of ecosystems and communities and human-caused changes to the environment can profoundly alter disturbance frequency and intensity. Activities such as the suppression of fire, logging, introduction of invasive or pest species can and do change plant communities. But the main thing to recognize after this video is that the change, or any kind of change, is a normal part of how plant and animal communities function. The question for us is whether or not those changes are desirable or not, and whether or not they fundamentally shift the types of species that are present in a system.